Hello, in today's video from Rapid TCT 2022, we're stopping by the Slice Engineering booth to see what they've been working on. And also we're talking with Mark Forge about their single strand reinforcement method that they use for 3D printing objects. I hope you learned something new today and let's get started. Okay, so we got Daniel here from Slice yeah, Engineering. Slice. So what you got here? All right, so we brought a bunch of fun new stuff out here to, uh, to talk about some new stuff, some old stuff, I guess. Uh, we've got, of course, our Mosquito Mag Plus hot end. Part of what we're trying to showcase here is that it's available in a bunch of different options and configurations. So this is a 285 uh, version with an R285 brake. Uh, this is a 175 uh, liquid cooled version. So we've got tons of different options, 175 or 285, air or liquid cooled, 50 or 100 watts of heating power, um, dual redundant, redundant sensors for safety, a uh, bunch of different options. But the Magnum Plus is our highest flow hot end. We advertise in the 90 yep. millimeters per second, but uh, internally we've printed up to 130, so that's kind of fun. Ooh. And that's with what material? Uh, that was with... That's a good question. I can't remember if that was with ABS. Well, I know your paper, the white paper, uh, was ABS. Was yeah. it like MG94 or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, MG94. Okay. So, yeah, the, uh, I think, I can't remember if that most recently was ABS. I didn't test what it was with PLA, but uh, PLA tends to be a little bit less, you know, so yeah, it doesn't flow that styrene, as well. Yeah, that's a portion of the ABS helps it flow a little better. Uh, Alright, so that's that's Mango Plus. We're starting to put Mango Plus on a bunch of different machines. So this is our stacker tool heads for Stacker 3D, S4 and S2. It's got uh, Mango Plus in there. Um, this is machine brackets. And then this is our new uh, convection shield, which Ooh. replaces our nozzle insulator that was... So no sock, right? So it's not a sock, but it's an aluminum uh, piece that is isolated thermally with some insulators. Okay. Like insulator, so you're not conducting a bunch of heat to it. Okay, so you're not bleeding heat down into the part. Right. Okay. And uh, also, of course, protects the nozzle from, from being pulled down. Okay. Uh, this is a Modix tool head. Um, this is a printed plate, but the real one has is, a, is a okay. metal uh, steel plate on it. But Basically, what we're doing with these now is, is providing everything sort of pre wired, pre terminated, connectorized with the current setup. Uh, this is something that we're working on right now. It's not quite available yet, but this is for a Mark Forged. Uh, is that a dual? Or is uh, that... So, this is actually their carbon. So yeah. Oh, yeah, because they do that they filled, do right? This carbon, right? Yeah. So, they, they have a <laughs> filament head and a carbon head okay. that uh, feeds uh, the carbon fiber rod. Um, carbon fiber filament, rather, and uh, so anyway, so we're just replacing the, the film the, uh, the polymer side, okay. not the carbon fiber side. Moving down a little bit here, we've got also bundles similar to that, but for using copperhead. So this is sort of how it ships okay. for the Race 3D Pro 2 and E2. And that really enables people to print some higher temperature materials, some more engineering grade materials, and provides abrasion resistance on those machines, uh, which is not available in uh, sort of stock. It's our copperhead setup. It's uh, we're kind of showcasing all the different heat break options that we have. We've got a couple more heat break options that are in the works right now and will be available soon. And copperhead's a nice sort of more of a traditional design, a little bit more cost effective than the regular mosquito, but uh, it's got some nice features like adjustable seat height and yep. the, uh, the copperhead seat. And breaks. you can use existing heat breaks or heat sinks. Heat sinks, yeah, yep. which is, makes it a, a lower cost <laughs> option for people. Yep that already have the majority of the hardware that they need. Uh, and kind of moving down the line, uh, Mosquito Magnum's been out for, for a while since we launched in 2019, but uh, it's our slightly higher flow version of the, of the regular Mosquito. The one we just launched, that is this is the first time we're showcasing it in public. Yeah, it's our Mosquito Conduct on it. That so, is really tiny. It is very tiny. So it's designed to be conductively cool yeah, instead of cooled in a fan, so no fan, obviously. Okay. Uh, so the idea is that you can match that or hook that up to a surface that either has a heat sink on it, okay. or uh, if you're using like a liquid cooled extruder, for example, you it would can just, it would just conduct right through it. Right okay. Right into the liquid cooled extruder. Huh. One of the nice features about it is that this uh, dovetail setup is 
mimicking the geometry of a picket tape rail, like uh, what's yep. on a rifle. And so what that allows you to do is have a very fast sort of hot swap. Oh yeah, because it would in, it would index, so you'd be yeah. able to like exactly. So you oh. know exactly. So these yeah. grooves, everything is is allows you to lock down the position X Y Z and. Uh, I guess ABC if you're talking yep. about rotation, right? So in every axis and uh, allows you to, to very quickly swap the entire okay. hot end. So, where we so, so that though, because you're only cooling it via, um, there's no active cooling, just right. conduction. Um, how hot can you print with that? Like, what are you going to be material limited, or it depends how big of a heat sink you throw on? I so think. we rate this to 500 degrees Celsius, just like we do the rest of our. Yeah, it's items. all metal. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, you can print ultima high peak with this okay. on it if you'd like. So as long, as long as the heat sink is enough to handle. Heat sink is enough. Yeah. Huh. So 88 cubic mil or um, 88 uh, cubic centimeters of. So this would probably be better in a heated environment more, right? Would that be more what it's aimed at? Right. Where we originally launched this was in a heated environment. Okay. We built this for an OEM of ours that is, uh, they're printing peak, but they also wanted to be able to print PLA. And what happens with peak is if you allow it to set hot end, crystallizes, and then to get it out, you have to really ramp up quite a bit to the point where you are You've got the magnet the filament. If you were to run PLA through that, uh, or another lower temperature material, you're going to basically fry it, um, yep. and, and it's going to cause buildup, carbon buildup in the in the filament path. And so to avoid that, you have a dedicated peak for ultim hot end, okay. and a dedicated uh, lower temperature uh, hot end, and you just quick swap them out nice. uh, without adjusting anything, uh, and leveling your bed or, or adjusting. Mm. The yeah, that, that definitely seems more. This would be aimed more at like commercial. Yeah, like, this, I don't think your average home gamer would be playing no, with something like no, this. That is not, cool. Not for and yeah, what material is uh, the actual, uh, well, what would be the heat? So heat that's thing? a bearing grains alloy Ooh. that uh, is very thermally uh, stable, conducts heat really well. Yeah, and it's not going to melt on you or anything. It's not going to uh, have any issues with handling the thermal properties. As, and it's also because uh, it's just particular alloy that we're using is very sturdy. Uh, uh, it'll take dings and impacts yeah. pretty well. I think that's what we have on it, actually. Yeah, that's actually that's pretty clever. <laughs> so, thank you. No, it reminds me a lot on the, uh, almost like what they have on the Pantheon machine, where it's like, yes. like yeah, something so like that. it's a similar, similar setup to, to the Pantheon machine. Okay. So I think we'll eventually be moving to something like this. Without. Yeah, because that's just, the, that's... Commercial off the shelf uh, versus custom right. is always a better yeah. option, or you, mostly. You can use this usually yeah. a better option. Yeah. yeah. Cool. To print the bench in like three and a half yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the machines. Thank you. Like oh, stop stop the no problem. So yeah. Just looking around. So you guys do a lot of filled stuff, right? Or metal? Or uh, we do bulk. metal. So we do. Uh, <laughs> uh, our basic material is. Uh, fiber with chop, uh, sorry, it's uh, nylon with chopped carbon fiber, okay. and then we continually reinforce it with uh, continuous carbon fiber. So you're feeding a strand through the filament itself? Uh, no, or it's two do... different print heads. So if you look here, so how does that work? So what's printing right now is onyx. Okay. So that's the nylon with chopped carbon fiber. Okay. Ignore the next nozzle because it doesn't matter unless we're printing all of them. And the one on the far side is a fiber nozzle. Okay. So that will be directly printing the fiber in between layers. Okay. So does that allow the fibers to cross the layers? No. Or no? So okay. they are their own layers. Okay. They're sandwiched in between the layers. But it's not taping. Okay. So we lay the strands directly. Okay. Uh, which allows us to have much tighter geometries for our reinforcement than you can with like fiber tape which is a 1980s version of it. Okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that, will I do that right now? It'll switch over or? Uh, no, I don't think we're reinforcing this part. Okay. So yeah. it, does it like cut it off? Like how does it, like it goes over, it does its laying the, the layer so down, but how is it like? It'll lay it and cut it. Lay it okay. and cut it. And how thick is that fiber? Like, fiber is uh, 125 micron. Okay. So you can see here, uh, this is just the standard infill. Yep. You can feel that. That, yep. that one bends. And then this has the continuous carbon fiber oh. in it, several layers of it. Try and bend that. And it's the same material. Same material, just with continuous carbon fiber reinforcement. <laughs> I'm surprised, like, how strong some of this stuff has gone. Yep. And what, what plastic is this? Uh, it's uh, just nylon with uh, chopped carbon fiber. So you have nylon, okay. 
Yeah, yeah it's the. We call it Onyx. Uh, wow, that is called it the same thing. And what percent CF is that? Can you explain that like a five? Um, so these are continuous strands. The okay. percent in the like the, the Onyx itself. In the Onyx itself, uh, it's. I honestly don't know. It's not super high. It's not super high. Because you got we the use, strands in there doing. We that. use shorter strands for it than a company like uh, Stratasys does. Okay. Mostly because most companies that say we have carbon reinforced plastic are talking about this. Yeah. They're talking. They're not talking about the continuous. Yeah. We don't get our strength out of that. That's about eight percent stronger than yeah. normal nylon. Who cares? It's mostly for surface finish. Yeah. So we use shorter strands because it's less wear and tear on the components. And you'll get better layer adhesion yep. too because carbon fiber just doesn't yep. stick to itself. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. That is stiff. Holy shit. Oh yeah. You can have that. Thanks, Onyx Pro. Yeah. Onyx Pros are I'm assuming it's a small desktop one. Yeah. So, it's gonna be that yeah. form factor, okay. but it does reinforcement. It does reinforcement in uh, fiberglass. Okay. Ooh, okay. So we reinforce in fiberglass, high temp, high strength fiberglass, Kevlar for added flexibility, and uh, carbon fiber. Okay. Now. Is that machine dependent? Like the machine that does carbon fiber can't do fiberglass or no? The different uh, it's levels. So okay. Onyx One is our cheapest machine. It doesn't do any reinforcement. Okay. Onyx Pro just does fiberglass because it's the cheapest reinforcement yep. material. Met Mark Two. Now the actual cool. fiberglass is that like a proprietary thing or is that like a? We make our own. You make your own. Um, if you tried to lay just a strand of fiberglass or just a strand of carbon fiber on a printer, yeah, it's you're... not going to adhere. No. They're very slippery. Uh, our secret sauce that we started with in 2014 was we figured out how to get it to adhere. Okay. So is it is there a little something else in there other than fiberglass? A little something something? I cannot tell you. Okay, I nope. do know. Okay, cool. uh, but yeah, that's the uh, industrial series. The bigger Same one. Three levels, just bigger, uh, faster. Okay. And then that's the FX20, which is a big, the big, big dog. And it does uh, Ulta. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, so so that's a heated chamber and everything. Aeros heated chamber, aerospace and market entry. Uh, it nice. heats higher than we need to for Ulta okay. because if you're designing that, you're going to design it for multiple thermopla uh, high temp thermoplastics. Okay. We just came out with Ulta first. It makes sense. Cool. Thank you.